So. Okay. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 19th event of our Impact Investor Circle Geneva SUC series, which was launched in November 2020 under the theme Improving Access to Impact Capital for SMEs in Africa. During the first eight episodes, we covered the most important players in the Zambian impact investing ecosystem with a particular focus on the market enablers and the suppliers of impact capital. And then we spent the fourth quarter 2021 in Tanzania, the first quarter of 2022 in Nigeria, and the second quarter of 2022 in Ghana. During the first quarter this year, we launched the fifth series, which is focusing on impact investment ecosystem in Kenya in general which was presented two weeks ago by the National Advisory Board for Impact Investing Kenya Task Force. And today we will host and we will focus on the role that market enablers play in connecting entrepreneurship and the UN SDGs. So the East African countries have made progress on some sustainable development goals with Kenya as a top performer, especially when it comes to climate action. Uh, where Kenya is on track to achieving SDG 13. However, all countries in the region face significant development challenges that counter the region's advancement towards many of the SDGs, which probably explains why a new president was elected in Kenya in August last year. Uh, when it comes to the supply of social investment in East Africa, a highly diverse group of social investors is actively deploying capital in East Africa with over 317, and this is non-exhaustive, social investors identified by the Africa Venture Philanthropic Association's research in 2020. The majority of the social investment capital deployed in East African countries continues to come from international sources with this Impact Investor Circle series also targets. So uh, in terms of the characteristic of the social investors active in the East African region, uh, as most of you know, the DFIs were among the largest providers of impact capital in the focus countries between 2015 and 2019. There was actually 12 DFIs which invested 6.6 .6 billion US dollars in 326 deals uh, between uh, 2015 and 2016, with an average deal size of 21 million. And the top three sectors covered were financial services, energy, and agriculture, accounting for 78% of total capital. When it comes to instruments, 60% of DFI capital is deployed through debt, and 46% 46, 46 of their capital deployed in the region goes to Kenya. Uh, when it comes to the sustainability aligned fund managers, uh, they have deployed 1.5 billion in 217 deals, with an average deal size of 6.7 million US dollars of which 86% of the capital deployed in deals of more than 5 million US dollars. And 67% uh, of the sustainability aligned fund managers capital was deployed in Kenya. Uh, Christian, can I uh, just interrupt a little bit there? I'm seeing you're sharing the screen with all the participants, but I'm not seeing, are you sharing something uh, with the presentation? The slides, you can't see the slides? No, I cannot see the slides right now. No, we can see the, your screen where you share all the participants yeah, on I, the end yes. nest. Yes. So uh, you need to share the entire screen and then select uh, the the tab where you have your slides and so on. Just to make sure we don't get too far down the line with all the numbers and so on. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, you can see it now. Yes. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so you didn't see these these slides. No, we did not see those slides, unfortunately. Okay. But we, you will probably share the slides afterwards also, and if people are inside of sure, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. perfect. Okay. So this slide shows the type of financing requirements for various types of organizations at various stages of growth. So in terms of the supply of social investment capital in the East African region, it is not very well aligned to the demand from social enterprises and impact businesses. There's a significant financing gap in the early states with many social investors focusing on enterprises with established business models and a, and a good track record. Um, 
the so-called well-known miss missing middle financing gap persists throughout the whole region despite widespread recognition and serious attempt to reduce it. And this gap affects startups and social enterprises seeking post-seed growth capital as well as SMEs, those considered too small or risky for commercial investors and banks and yet too, too big to be uh, catered to by microfinance institutions or grant makers. And addressing these gaps requires catalytic funding and innovative instruments to de-risk and attract private investment. Okay. Uh, the AVPA uh, research identified common challenges facing most social enterprises and startups across East African countries, as outlined on the slide. Um, the top 10 companies in the region attracted more than 69% of the total funding uh, by the sustainability aligned fund managers, uh, with 20% of the deals made in these companies. Co compared to West African region, in East Africa has a high number of expatriate enterprises with 30% of Kenyan enterprises founded or co-founded by foreigners, compared to only 10% in Ghana, for example, or 5% in Nigeria. And the AVPA research also identified key challenges facing social enterprises and startups across the East African region, and classified into three categories, the ecosystem level, supply side, and demand side. So when it comes to the demand side, on average, 66% of the companies across um, the focus countries in a region are informal, and this, of course, also affect the ability to attract uh, funding. Um, so when it comes to uh, the enabling environment for social investment, uh, the guiding framework for social investment remains very fragmented with multiple laws and authorities governing the sector. And the region, however, boosts a high number of ecosystem uh, support providers, including incubators, accelerators, service providers, and financial intermediary, some of which will be showcased today. Uh, and lastly, from um, uh, the startup link, uh, according to the startup link, with all of the caveat, of course, has a lot of issues regarding the methodology, but nonetheless, uh, Nairobi boosts 180 startups in the startuplink.com sample database, which represent 90% of Kenya's sample startups. And Nairobi is, of course, the highest ranked startup ecosystem in Kenya. Uh, while Nairobi decreased by 27 spots in its global rank in the Global Startup Ecosystem Index in 2022, its ranking in Kenya remained a stable one. Um, yeah, so these are some of the startups uh, that has been captured by Startup Link. Um, you can see that on the slides, which I will share uh, after this event. Okay, so, uh, so today events introduces uh, the audience to a number of leading practitioners within Kenya's impact investing ecosystem, the so-called uh, market enablers, and the agenda is therefore structured as follows. First, Mrs. Uh, Svetlana Banerjee will present what she's doing to help impact enterprises secure funding faster through the impact investing TV show, uh, which she has been running for a number of years with her husband. And second, Mr. Johan Fransen, CEO of Entnest, will present why he thinks that Entnest should become the home of Kenya's impact enterprises and market enablers. This introduction will be followed by part one of the core program, where five of Kenya's leading market enablers will present the role they play in making Kenya a more attractive tech and or impact investing destination. Mm -hmm. And this will then be followed by part two, where specific questions to the presenters will be raised by me as a moderator. There's also an opportunity for short exchange with the attendees. And at the end of the event, uh, we'll, I will conclude with a few remarks regarding uh, our uh, ESG toolkit and the next steps for participants and investors, as well as the next events. So this is a live session, which is being recorded and will be uploaded on both 4P Group, as well as the Swiss Impact Investing Association YouTube channels before the end of the weeks and shared with all prospective and actual impact investors investing in the East Africa uh, community or in Kenya in particular. Uh, there's some echo now. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, in the hope that they, through their investment, will assist Kenya's market enablers scale up their capacity building programs so that Kenya's impact enterprises can scale their solutions for the sustainable development goals, thereby contributing to shifting Kenya towards the so-called leapfrogging impact tech economy. Let me quickly present the house rule. Please turn off your microphones whenever you are not speaking throughout the entire event in order not to, not to disturb the speakers and the listeners. 
And during the Q&A, remember to introduce yourself by name and affiliation and keep the questions short. And please do feel free to use the chat box on Internet to introduce yourself and raise pertinent questions during the Q&A. So, uh, so with this introducing remark, uh, I would now like to move on to the next part. And now I'll pass over to my SIA colleague, uh, Sveta. So Sveta, over to you, please. Thank you, Christian. Can you hear me well, just to be sure? Yes, we hear you perfectly. Okay, perfect. Great. So thank you, first of all, to have me at this amazing event. I'm really uh, um, thankful for the invitation. And as I have very limited time, I will fly you over to our through our activities, what we do and how we potentially can support the communities which are in trying to do impact in Africa. I will share my screen. Just give me a second. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, I see it. Should okay, perfect. So impact investing solutions. We are basically providing solutions, right, to uh, many entrepreneurs, financial institutions, different kind of uh, experts, governments, and everyone who wants to contribute to sustainable development goals. We've been on the market already three years now with this company, but have more than 25 experience together in impact investing space alone. And uh, our team has grown right now to seven people. What we do when you look at the fundraising, we of course help businesses to attract funds. And because it's really, uh, I think, one of the burning issues in impact investing and sector at all, as uh, everyone is looking for money, especially the smaller companies are struggling more. The early stage and maybe first, first round of finance is usually the most difficult one. And to, till now, we raised one to 430 millions, depending on the stage of the business. So we are also helping the smaller ones to raise the money. To do that, we have created four pillars of activity, but I will tell you a bit later on. Like this, you know, all, all of you, our planet is facing unprecedented challenges. And this is what we are trying to do with uh, our activities to help growing impact investing market which has grown from 25 billions to 1.2 trillions from 2013 and 2023 now, according to Global Impact Investing Network. And traditional markets, they are failing and failing again. I mean, I'm sure you're aware about credit Suisse now. And uh, uh, as we are living in Switzerland, it's really, really, um, how to say, disappointing, I would say, from the Swiss government at all that they are saving the bank, of course, for the image of Switzerland, whatever. Lehman and Brothers were not saved by America in 2008. They dropped it. Maybe it was a good decision. And here now they put more than 200 billion to save the bank. I would rather create an impact investing fund for this amount of money and help true entrepreneurs to make impact well this is a debate which it's not part of the topic but still just to show you that traditional financial markets are, are have failed and they continue failing so it's really needed the development of impact investing the ecosystem all around the world not only in switzerland but we are active uh, around the globe of course and this is our mission to make it the new normal because any investment makes impact positive or negative we were not measuring it, but it is there. So it's better to have a positive impact, of course, if uh, any investors are listening than uh, a negative one. So we need to start measuring impact in order to be able to manage it as well. Our services, it's quite broad and I will show you our four pillars, but it's really from the impact market entry when some businesses still require education, networking, navigation through the whole ecosystem and become investment ready. So this is what we do with our first pillar impact investing school. Then once you are already established and maybe you want to get um, 
sales and mentoring coaching, and you can already get a certification, for example, to distinguish yourself from competitors. So it's impact business development. And also, also at this stage, you will require funds where we also can help you. And the third one, impact investing attraction, we prepare you, promote you also um, in impact investing space because we had some businesses which do amazing impact. They are established, but still many of European actors or global actors, they don't know them. So we also help with branding to position yourself and increase funds. Even if you already have sufficient funds, there is still no limit, right? And coming to the four pillars, education is a key. It was a key. It's how I started personally in impact investing sector. And I still see it as a key. So if people don't know what is impact investing, if they don't understand the difference between sustainable investing, impact investing, responsible investing, they are lost. They think one is the other one and they don't take the right action. So education continues to be the key in um, different regions of the world. We were two years, uh, two weeks before we were in MENA region in Dubai, Abu Dhabi and met uh, amazing uh, leaders there in the government, in fa family offices, finance, construction. And they all are very eager to learn about impact investing, even though they develop already, started developing the ecosystem, but they see as well education in all levels, even from schools, then we go to universities, and then of course, incubators, accelerators, it's all needed. The education is a key. And this is why in with our impact investing school, we provide accessible education. So for example, this year we created three online courses. Oh, here's just uh, the community part, but uh, let me go to the school. We created three online courses. What is impact investing? How to measure impact in a very practical way? How to do impact marketing to reach more clients and to increase your audience because it's so needed also for early stage startups. And you can find it all on Udemy platform. You know, you go to our website, impactinvestingschool.com. You find our products, you are all guided to the very accessible courses where you learn amazing stuff all put together for you. You know, when I started, that would be a gold mine, you know, because uh, when I started, there was really barely nothing in impact investing and you needed to put the whole puzzle together yourself as an expert at the business where there was nothing like that. And now we really enable people to learn what it is, to start measuring impact, to get uh, to the stage that you can attract impact investors. And it's only if you are lazy, <laughs> you, you can't do that. So I really believe that it is possible to attract investors, whatever stage you are and it's all about impact and stable business model. So you need both, right? If we are talking about impact investing and we teach you how to implement it, how to do it both. Even if you are maybe looking for career paths, it's also provided in some of our courses. Then going back to second pillar, Kamamal Impact Community, it's about connecting the whole ecosystem. So if you are in impact business, you can register for free, you can publish your business. And there we have already amazing investors and experts who are eager to either work with you or invest in you. We have amazing fa families like Brennick Myers, who are managing CNA Foundation, for example. We have European Investment Bank and many more uh, amazing actors who are on the platform. So you can join it for free, camomile.ch, very simple, to help growing the ecosystem and contributing to sustainable development goals. And SDGs are always the red line for us. We are really trying with all what we do to contribute to SDGs. Now, the third one, uh, Christian mentioned the TV show. It's the only impact investing TV show, at least that I know. We are running it since two years. And originally, we started it to raise awareness about impact investing, about SDGs, to inspire, to show the solutions around the globe and uh, motivate people for action. Now we see, especially last uh, one year, I would say that the side effect of the TV show, that the projects 
businesses which come to TV show, they also, if they're looking for partners or money, if they did their homework properly, then they also get what they were looking for, which is amazing. So now we are also using TV show to introduce various kind of businesses to our 7,000 impact investors network. And you, you can find us on all possible channels, uh, YouTube, Spotify, uh, podcast. You can find us on LinkedIn, Instagram. You can find us on 100 smart TVs like Apple TV, Amazon TV. We are also there and uh, growing every single day. TikTok as well. Now, I think this is also a very exciting thing which we started impact leader certification it's to help you to measure impact but not only measure after what do you do with that you want to share it with your clients you want to share it with potential investors partners in order to show hey we are really contributing to sdgs we are really qualified certified as an impact business by impact investing solution and so you can prove your company's credibility and increase the value of your brand, right? And stand out of com from competitors. You can find the certification program on our website, isolutions.ch. And it's, again, we made it accessible. You know, there are many certifications out there, but either they're costly, time-consuming, and complicated. So here we even offer you a self-certification or if you want us to check your impact report, we can do that. And then uh, you will get additional credibility that you are certified as impact leader from our side. This is our team. Stephen Brennickmeyer himself is also on our advisory board. We have uh, Alessia Minkos also as business advisor. She's, uh, she has built in thousands of businesses and helped them, uh, especially in the US region. Our impact, maybe to show you a few numbers, um, we have created more than 65 TV shows. We have helped raise up to 430 millions. We have more than 7,000 event participants over the years. Our impact investors base has grown to 7,000. It's growing every day, actually. <laughs> Come on, miles users organically, we reach 700 quality yeah. users, but um, I think in the next years, we will be definitely growing it uh, much more. We also organized more than 10 conferences and issued already more than 50 certificates. Uh, and it's, again, just a start. We are going to grow much faster. So you are more than welcome to join Kamamal community, check our courses, get certified, and maybe come to our TV show if you are ready. Um, you can also apply and get a free call with us 15 minutes so we can see if uh, you are indeed a good match for us already. Now, a few testimonials. We had, for example, president of uh, Mauritius, Mrs. Uh, Gurip Fakim, the sixth president, that she really likes our show. She's been or three times even already. You know, we also show inspiring leaders, not only the businesses, to keep a good mix. And ex-president, ex-prime minister, sorry, of uh, the Netherlands, Mr. Balkanande also was uh, and is our big supporter. And we are very um, grateful to all the support around the globe, which uh, helps us to make impact investing the new normal. Here is my email and Ben's email. Please uh, feel free to drop us an email if it's necessary. Otherwise, first, please check our websites, iasolutions.ch, find any information you might need. And of course, we are always looking for inspiring businesses which we can show on TV show and help you get funds, partners, whatever you're looking for. Okay, I think I stop here. Uh, Christian. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Svetlana, for this uh, amazing presentation of, of uh, the amazing work that you and Ben are doing. Uh, so uh, I need just some time. Uh, without any further ado, um, we'll hand over to our next speaker, which is uh, the host of today's event, Mr. Johan Fransen. Over to you, Johan. Thank you so much, uh, Christian, and uh, really interesting to hear also from uh, you, Sveta, there. And again, I think this whole 
seminar is about uh, closer interaction and collaboration and complementation. So I think we have already found quite um, interesting opportunities here. Um, I will be very brief. I'm going to be only sharing one slide. And um, I hope that you are seeing it uh, right now, right? Yes. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about Ant Nest, of course. Then, so Ant is short for entrepreneurs, and Nest is like the home of entrepreneurs. And I started Ant Nest uh, together with a great team um, uh, as an ethical alternative to many of the big tech giants out there today. I feel we're all in way too many separated communities. This is a presentation I was in um, just showing Switzerland and how many different networks there are only in, uh, in Switzerland. And I don't think that they are even covering everything here. But uh, the problem for many of us is that we are really quite overwhelmed. Uh, and um, by that comes then also inefficiency and a lot of mistrust from all the anonymous profiles and so on. So Entnest, um, we are uh, a digital infrastructure for the trusted local and global entrepreneurship ecosystem. Clearly, entrepreneurship is the future of work. I don't think that we can rely on the big corporations or our governments to hire the future world population. So we need to create more successful entrepreneurs everywhere. And Entness then, it's for the full ecosystem. So all the way from support organizations like what um, um, uh, 4IP, Christian's organization, or Sveta with uh, SIA and Camomile and so on. But we have also a lot of different uh, accelerators, incubators, co-working spaces, educational institutes, and so on. Everybody who wants to really create more successful entrepreneurs together in a trusted environment. Lots of aspiring uh, founders, of course, lots of established entrepreneurs. And what we're interested in is rather quality instead of quantity. Uh, we're all getting spam, scammed, and hacked, I think, by people wanting to connect just to get a, for them to get a bigger reach, but um, seldom for uh, higher quality and, and more synergies. So synergies is a critical word, I think. Um, and especially today, uh, when there is so much fragmentation and duplication, we, we absolutely have to create much more synergies. And we do that by having um, an invite-only platform here then. And I'll jump over really quick to, uh, to Entness just so that we can see a little. Oh, there are more things coming in as we speak also. But uh, here's, for instance, um, the inside of Entnest. Many of you who are in this call today have only uh, uh, clicked on the video link, which is only having one step in, one foot in, in the Entnest uh, big toolbox. But uh, um, by having an invitation, you can get so much more benefits and, and value out of this. And here you see, for instance, uh, the 4IP group, um, the profile uh, of, of Christian, and I'm just picking up also the um, copy link there so that I can share the invitation link from 4IP. And I will share it with you here in the video chat. But um, here you can see uh, the link also to see, uh, for instance, on inside of Entnest on the um, 4IP group and so on. So this is how easy it is to, to create a lot more synergies and so on here. Um, and yeah, there are about 8,000 members inside of Entnest right now from more than 60 countries. We're getting uh, quite uh, interested in Africa and lots of people joining. I see, of course, uh, and know that this event is about uh, Africa and Kenya specifically. But I, I think uh, we can very easily create synergies, not just in Kenya and Africa, but even beyond that. So invitation only, all in one toolbox, and then the creation of a network of networks. So we have included elements from LinkedIn, from Zoom, from Slack, from Eventbrite, Upwork, Mighty Network, and so on. 
and have put that together in our own form inside of Entnest. Um, and uh, it's all about uh, the organic growth with having the right people being inside of, uh, of Entnest. And um, if I just go over again to um, sharing my screen still here, but opening the chat box, um, I am now posting that invitation link. So for all of you who are not yet in Entnest with both your feet, you have an invitation from uh, Christian's um, uh, for IP group and Entnest, we have made a special um, uh, uh, commitment to provide extra special service to the in, invited organizations and people uh, from Christian and from the 4IP group. I'd be happy to do the same with you, Sveta, of course. I think we can really create a lot of further synergies and interaction also with uh, Sia here. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy to see so many people here, many new, but also some very well known like uh, uh, Jane and Andrew and a number of other people that I already know. Uh, but we need to grow the trusted uh, community and that's what we're doing inside of Entnest. So a great opportunity of utilizing um, uh, the Entnest video instead of uh, Zoom, for instance. In Zoom, when you cancel or uh, close the call, everything is basically lost. In Entnest, if you have both your feet in Entnest, we would be able to continue to interact with all the participants who are there. And we could also immediately and by automation keep the communication, the written chatting and so on that is here. Um, now there's a lot of people who are not yet with both their feet inside of Entnest, but um, uh, if you would be with both feet, then we can cover and capture also your uh, comments. So right now we see um, Jane has commented, for instance, in here. And uh, um, yeah, it's really a, a very easy way of uh, immediately continue the interaction with great people also after this video call is over. So with that, and here's Jane's profile just for argument's sake, which is looking beautiful and very interesting. She's uh, done 105 activities inside, which is really, really excellent and uh, connecting with people and inviting a few people already. But uh, I'm sure that there's a lot more coming from uh, all the people here um, so, yeah, with that, I'm handing back over to you, Christian, and um, for you who are not inside yet, as said, please utilize the, uh, the invitation link there from Christian, and we will set up uh, um, a, a bigger support uh, opportunity for you guys. Thank you very much, Christian. Okay, thank you so much, Johan. And uh, so I will now pass over to Mrs. Grace Vakori. Uh, from the Aspen Network of Development Entrepreneurs. She's a regional chapter head, and she's also the secretary of the Association of Startup and SMEs Enablers of Kenya. So, uh, uh, Grace, over to you, please. Christian, um, for the invitation here today. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you and we can see you and we can see your slides. Thank you so much. Over to you, Grace. It's been a talk of development entrepreneurs, um, how we support the ecosystem in the work that we do to ensure that we have access to financing for the ecosystem. So I'll just go through what Andy is and what we are doing in Kenya and presenting opportunities on how we can be able to work together. So the Aspen Network Development Entrepreneurs is a global network of organizations that propel entrepreneurship in developing economies. So to be clear, it's not an association or a membership platform for entrepreneurs directly, but for all the intermediaries. We have chap eight chapters of class, the Global South. We have East Africa, West Africa, Southern Africa, India, East and Southeast Asia, um, Brazil, Andrean, and, and Mexico. Um, we 
provide critical financial, educational, and business support services to small and growing businesses. How we define small and growing businesses is any business that would have more than five entrepreneurs, or rather five employees, and we'll be looking for catalytic funding that will be between $20,000 to up to $2 million. And based, we work with SGBs based on the conviction that they create jobs, they stimulate long-term economic growth, and also produce environmental and social benefits. Therefore, having a quite an um, intentional view and aspect on impact. As for the numbers, we have more than 230 Andy members across the world, coming from more than 150 countries, and 200 plus SGBs are supported annually. Now, the scope of our members really is wide. We, when you think about intermediaries and think about value chains of um, the entrepreneurship journey, we have investors, we have donors, we have uh, ESOs, and they are quite a quite a healthy mix of these intermediaries um, that we are able to have as members who then work with the specific entrepreneurs that they support to be able to um, give them the support. Our strategy at Andy, we have been able to identify a couple of sector challenges that small and growing businesses are um, facing. This, we have targeted three specific ones, talent development, um, finance, access to finance and impact investing, and also how to measure their impact, both social and environmental. So for us, we see the urgent issues being um, SGBs as the drivers of decent work, going back to SDG number eight, gender equality that is driven through the small and growing businesses, going back to SDG number five, gender equality, and how to use entrepreneurship and approaches as a pathway to climate and environmental action, going back to SDG um, six, clean water and sanitation, SDG seven, affordable and clean energy, SDG 13, climate action. So our central pillars, therefore, are to really make the case for small and growing businesses, to increase the effectiveness of small and growing businesses, support organizations, and to cultivate the entrepreneurial ecosystems that we have in the, in the regions where we are currently in. So our work in East Africa currently con really focuses on convening. How are we able to bring our members together that are across the segmentation of the membership, as you've seen, and we've seen the specific members themselves. So we're able to run networking forums where we're able to bring networking conversations, breaking those barriers of access to donors specifically. We're also able to run round tables that would be specifying on specific uh, thematic areas and working groups that allow members to be able to create um, strategy and programming work that would uh, will lead to solving the problems that they are handling. We also have programs that usually have great granting facilities to the entrepreneurs of our members who are intermediaries. As most recently, uh, last month, we were able to close out on a program called Accelerating Women Climate um, Entrepreneurs, where we took them through um, some, some um, programming for capacity building, and then we were able to regrant the entrepreneurs there with some uh, grants to be able to uh, skill the work that they are doing. So not just regranting, but also um, handing, hand in hand with capacity support. We also are very big on actionable research, understanding the markets that we work on, and so that we are able to get clean data on the market size and the sectors that we need to be focusing on. Uh, we just finished our project called the Green Entrepreneurship Mapping here in Kenya, where we were delving into the subsectors that our businesses will be in and what the market size will be in and what the opportunities are for investments and this one was supported by ikea foundation and these uh, reports are very open to the public i will be willing to share them for your convenience we also support uh, capacity building that i haven't talked about and we have specific programming that is geared towards increasing um, increasing the technicalities and the cap technical capabilities of our ESOs, but also the in and entrepreneurs that they work with to ensure that they are well positioned for any investments that comes their way. So we have two specific programming. Uh, we have the investor management trainings. These ones are very specific for investor managers to help them to understand the nuances of working with investors and how they need to present themselves. We also have a training of, on impact measurement, very much um, giving them the impact matrices that they would need to have to have an ESG environmental 
governance and social kind of outlook as they run their programs. We are also in advocacy and we just facilitate and participate in policy related initiatives that will be able to grow ecosystem building from how we define um, you know, startups, micro enterprises to SMEs so that we are able to tie back to what uh, regulation would help to ensure that they have access to investments, but also that they are well organized to meet the formalized, formalized requirements that they would need uh, even for compliance purposes to allow them to access these grants. I will end it there, one was very short and uh, our website is on there, antiglobal.org, and you're welcome to email me if you have any questions, but I can also share these slides for your consideration. So thank you very much, back to you, Dr. Chris. Thank you very much, Grace, for providing this great overview of what Andy is doing uh, around the world and uh, more specifically in Kenya was uh, uh, very insightful. So, uh, uh, okay, let's see where is my screen. Okay. So, so now we move on to the next part of the program. Um, Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, the first speaker that we have uh, is Mr. Steve Nyangdia, who is an active member of the VC startup ecosystem in Kenya, uh, while being a great fundraiser, networker, and a polished corporate finance professional. So, Steve Nyangdia, over to you, please. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Kristen. I hope you can all see me. Yeah, we see you very well. Thank you, thank you. Um, how many minutes do I have, Christian? Uh, we're a little bit behind schedule. If you can keep it within seven minutes, that would be great. <laughs> Fantastic. Ah, okay. Um, I just go straight ahead to my presentation. You want to share yes, your screen? Yeah. Uh, with Johan, maybe you can guide him. Because I suppose it's the first time Steve is using... Uh, uh, no, I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm good. Okay. I was struggling a bit, but now I'm good. Okay. Great. We I hope it's it. visible to you all. Yeah, it's great. Okay, great, great. Um, I'll start it off as uh, as you said. Uh, my name is Steve Jenga. I'm the investment and transaction lead at Vilgo Africa. Uh, so Vilgo Africa actually, uh, we are an incubator and impact investment. Uh, very pan-African, so we invest in early stage health tech and healthcare businesses. Uh, so this is our seven year of existence. Um, so footprints, as you can see on, on the map there, almost in every in every African country. So and we've supported 50 startups across all those countries. You can see. Um, and uh, in terms of investment, we've done two million now, uh, and this is spread. Actually, we are one uh, investor that really embraces blended finance. So we've done safe. We've done convertibles, we've done grants, because we believe uh, in blended finance and that's what most startups need. And uh, in terms of follow-on funding, all these startups accumulatively have been able to achieve 20 million US dollars. And directly, I must say, we've created uh, 420 jobs. And uh, in terms of impact, so far we've touched close to 2.5 million. I must, uh, probably as we speak, it's headed to 3 million. And uh, in a nutshell, these are some of the companies. Some you may know, some you may not know. So this uh, Ilara is in Kenya and also in other African countries. Turaco is very active in the East African market. Clinic Pesa is based in Uganda. And those are the metrics, as you can see there. They have managed to raise actually a good amount of money out of the support that we have given them. Uh, and th that's basically why we invest in these early stage uh, companies. So what we are good at, uh, we do screening and selection. So in this case, uh, we do a very rigorous process. And uh, in this case, we, we have to set, we center it depending with the situation or depending with the call. And then also to ensure that the company meets the threshold and, uh, the, you know, as per the metrics that we normally set for our selection. And we also offer uh, technical assistance to the investees. So we build a lot of uh, internal capacity to these companies. And again, as I mentioned earlier on, we do seed capital uh, very uh, you know, early stage capital, so to speak, very patient capital. And this sort of is to risk the, uh, the businesses and the startups so they can be able to access follow-on funding. And then again, also, we do so much in terms of thematic calls. 
and this we work closely with global entities like Boringa Ingelem, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Agidius Foundation, uh, IDRC. So we do thematic calls, we target innovators or startups within a specific area like AI 4H, uh, you know, or any other area like now. So we have another program that focuses on startups within there, uh, you know, that have AI in their system, especially from, uh, um, you know, uh, supply chain perspective. And again, also, we do a lot of ecosystem building. We work closely with academia, government, private bodies, corporates, and even also um, other ecosystem like, uh, you know, uh, startups, uh, you know, like East Africa Venture Capital Associations and other, you know, um, ecosystem players. Uh, again, also, we do a lot of support uh, from a market, market entry perspective. We really support innovators to be able to enter a new market in East Africa and now Africa uh, entirely. Uh, and again, also we have a we've, we have a board. I mean, a fund on board in terms of uh, uh, we are building a fund currently. Now we, we are raising actually uh, ten million dollars. Uh, and now, as we speak, we we are able now to fund over and above our seed capital, the one I mentioned, which is very early stage, hundred. 50,000 to 100,000. Now the fund is able to give us the capacity to give funding now all the way to 800k uh, US dollars uh, with our partner company, Jazari Fund. Um, so this is how our model is. And I believe that's essentially why uh, Krista reached out to me. So we normally uh, classify our support in three areas. A company pre-product is a company very early stage, pre-revenue, and then pre-scale. So as you, as you can see there, for a company at the pre-product uh, pre level, this is about value proposition, especially validation to the market, you know, IP protection, access <clears throat> in terms of access to other networks. So this is a lot of handholding, a lot of mentorship, a lot of support. And then again, also, uh, we do a lot of, uh, you know, funding and co-funding. I mentioned we do seed capital, very, you know, small ticket size, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000. This is for early stage businesses. And then, for businesses, especially at the pre-scale level, we do in investor introduction, and that's actually my jurisdiction. Um, I'm really involved, and even actually this evening, I'm going to a platform for East Africa Venture Capital Association, just to ensure that we give, uh, our, especially the mature, the more mature now of startups that joined our cohort very early on, we transit them to uh, more mature funds. Uh, we also do a lot of talent infusion. We we are able to participate in terms of uh, you know that we inject a lot. Of uh, proper corporate governance in the businesses and even to ensure that these businesses uh, they have the right techniques and, and, and the right people to run them and again also uh, a very key area of this support is the business model and validation so we help in fine-tuning the business model especially after you know um, just at the pre-revenue stage now there you need to refine your model you need support especially uh, you know your GTM uh, strategy go to market we, we refine it to ensure that you understand the market you keep refining and then also down the road then that's where now we, we involve the issue of investment readiness because uh, we believe for you to be investor ready you must go through all these stages so at this level now uh, we're able to ensure that the business uh, or the startup is investor ready so this starts from an operational technical and even financial perspective so uh this year we assist in documents like the preparation of teasers pitch decks you know financial model investor memorandum even giving them now you know, that hard holding in the investors conversations and ensuring that you know the deal the smooth flow from you know origination you know negotiation all the way now to deal closure we ensure that there's proper support to these startups yeah so that's that's how our model is and uh yeah in in a nutshell um uh, i think because i don't want to take more, much of your time so th this is our team um that's our co-founder our chairman and uh you can see myself there and the other team members. Uh, we are very uh, global, as you can see in that team. Uh, and again, also, these are some of the partners we have on board. The Nelson, USA, I mentioned Agidias, Path. So really, we are a very global entity and always ready to support startups in the ecosystem. So I will end it there. Uh, so unless there's any questions, so Christian, I'll give it back to you. And thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Steve, for presenting this amazing overview of what you're doing in Will Grow Africa. Uh, we'll come back to you later during the Q&A. If you have time, I understand you have another function later on, but I hope uh, you'll be able to stay on to, to the Q&A. Uh, so let's uh, continue quickly to our next speaker, which is Mrs. Andrea Hazel, which is a fundraising specialist providing capacity building and fundraising uh, through the Pangea Accelerator. <clears throat> Andrea, over to you. 
I can't see her. Um, okay, I don't know. Um, she said there could be an issue, so uh, so in maybe she will join us later uh, since I cannot see her. Okay, so uh, in that case, we move on to our next speaker, which is uh, Mr. Haigote Innocent, who is a team lead of StartTNF, organizer of Techstar Startup Weekend Nairobi, director of Answer Village, tech lead at KNCC, uh, and mentor at IBIS Africa. So, uh, Magote, over to you. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we hear you very well. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'll just quickly share my screen. You can see my screen? Okay, let me see how this works. So you see there's a bar normally down here. Uh, this is the third bottom. You should click on that one, and then once you click on that, uh, there will be a, a a square that you should click on that will allow you to share yeah. your screen. So you okay. have to click okay. two times. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure the button is working. Um, maybe I can switch to Chrome. I'm not sure it works on Safari. Normally, uh, it works sure. better on Chrome. If I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me just quickly switch to to Chrome. All right. Okay. Uh... Okay, we see you. Okay, we see you. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um... Yeah. So I said you click on the third bottom here, and then you you come to a screen where you can see your presentation. You need to click on that bottom so that okay. everyone can see your screen. Okay, that's okay. Yep. You can see my screen now. I'll just open yeah. my presentation. We see you're sharing uh, the screen with all the people on, but yeah. You can see my presentation as well? No. You need to select the entire screen uh, when you share. Okay. Okay, gotcha. It's been such a great event so far here, uh, uh, Christian. It's uh, really interesting to listen to the many people who are very interested in focusing on the passion and the purpose-driven organizations. So very much looking forward to hearing from you also, Innocent, here. No, in, innocent. There may be an interest of time. Uh, we can share you, you know, on Intnest. Uh, you can actually upload afterwards your presentation, so people can see your slides. Um, I, I understand this is maybe the first time you're using Intnest, so, um, so I think it's better we use the time to listen to you. Uh, so maybe you can just uh, speak without the slide, and then you can share them afterwards. Okay, perfect. Um, so my name is Innocent uh, Magode. Uh, I am the team lead at, at Startinev. And what we do at Startinev, uh, we are very focused on enabling innovation. And this came as a result of, um, I think, uh, the co-founders realizing that our education system really was not supporting um, students who wanted to become entrepreneurs, uh, myself being one of them. And so what we've been doing is we've, we've been primarily running startup weekends and text as that is by Techstars in Nairobi. And the goal has been to get as many early stage founders into entrepreneurship. 
we've done six editions of that and out of that we've seen 180 180 entrepreneurs come out of that we can comfortably say 17 of those ones are currently building their enterprises yeah and uh, having built this from three days uh, of participating startup weekends has been one of the major successes we've seen but besides that out of that we've been able to build a community called anza village and it is primarily based off the fact that if founders are able to build out of peer growth and peer networking so we are building a platform where founders are able to network to share resources together to even access um and cross share what they do so you can imagine um, as a founder building a legal platform and another founder building a a system that enables me to build my platform and we've seen a lot of founders now being able to cross share resources we've seen a lot of founders being able to even uh, merge to build uh, one platform out of that we've introduced a mentoring factor where a lot of our founders now have access to direct mentorship from the very successful founders um, in the ecosystem as well uh, and thirdly, the other thing we are doing is, which is actually launching tomorrow, is uh, Anza Academy, which is a capacity building platform, uh, which allows these founders again to get access to trainings, to resource, to to resources and training. Um, this prim primarily again comes from the fact that um, our education system doesn't really support entrepreneurship per se. So a lot of founders who come into the ecosystem are not ready to and are not aware of most things. Uh, personally, I did uh, a two a two semester entrepreneurship course, but at the end of it all, I still couldn't really understand, you know, this whole raising thing. Um, um, and what we are doing is now helping these founders to be able to to learn um, from mentors who have already done that before, but also from experts in the ecosystem training on various various issues. We have nine nine are subtopics which we've chosen with and we feel are very necessary for these startups and these founders and that will be happening over the next eight weeks uh, so each week there'll be a there'll be a topic we'll be tackling and at the end of the eight weeks we'll we'll have them uh, graduate and pitch to a panel of experts and investors would be willing to invest uh, in them and that and through that they're able to be at least investor ready so by the time they're pitching they are ready to pitch and lastly one of the, the other things we do is we try to democratize our entrepreneurship and that has been by bringing together ecosystem players i think um i don't know if it's the same in other markets in the kenyan market entrepreneurship is quite segregated you so you'll find that founders sit on one side the government is on the other side corporate is on the other side and the founders are sort of left alone so what you're doing is are we able to bring everyone together are we able to bring founders um government corporate and uh the successful founders who also sit on their own uh, on their own side as well are we able to bring them together through our various programs we've been able to partner with a couple of partners uh last year we did uh the unfpa fgm hack labs which was a hack lab that brought together the un um and founders across Africa trying to build solutions around FGM to achieve the UN goal of ending FGM in Africa by 2030. Uh, just three weeks ago, we did Seistival by GIZ. Again, GIZ is, is really working towards uh, having a food secure Africa. And so what we did is we organized an event in Nairobi, bringing together 80 founders from across Africa um, who are in agritech and they were able to pitch to a panel of 50 investors um, yeah, and all this is to try to de democratize um, what entrepreneurship is. It's not a lonely journey as it may seem, but if we're able to bring all this together, we're able to really help these founders build quicker and um, give them as many resources as they're able to. And lastly, uh, the other thing that we have been really uh, been able to do is to drive policy uh, across various sectors to make sure that the policies that exist uh, especially from the government are policies that really support our entrepreneurs and support the entrepreneurship ecosystem i think in most cases you find that the policies that exist do support smes do support businesses but they do don't really support um the the ever changing uh ever changing um nature of us of the startup world so are we able to help government uh, even 
drive policy that helps founders build better. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we've been able to do, and that's what we are doing in, in the ecosystem. Um, over the last four years, we've been in existence. We've done roughly 400 events. We currently have a founder base of 5,000 founders who we've been able to help through various programs, and we are currently um, having MOUs with at least 87 partners. Thank you so much. Okay, Mr. Innocent, thank you so much for this uh, presentation and for sharing uh, the amazing thing that you're doing, particularly with the young entrepreneurs in Kenya. Um, again, uh, so we'll move on to our next speaker, uh, Mrs. Uh, Grace Pascal M. Dume, uh, who represents uh, FSD Africa, uh, which is a specialized development agency funded by UK's Department for well, we, what used to be called UK's Department for International Development, working to make uh, finance work for Africa's future. Um, are you there, Mrs. M. Demo? Uh, I don't see her. So uh, she also was uh, hesitating as to whether she could make it. Um, so again, in the interest of time, we'll move on to our last speaker, uh, which is Mrs. Jessica Francisca Calago, who is an entrepreneur and co-founder of Brave and IHOP, a computer scientist, talent strategist, ex executive tech, and product recruiter, a musician, and public speaker, and she's even a TED fellow. So, uh, and on top of that, she's the first female in tech and music. So we very much look forward to hearing uh, what you're doing in Kenya and beyond. Jessica, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Doc, and uh, the team. Um, I must say, it's a pleasure to be here and learning uh, what everyone is doing as ecosystem leaders in the uh, ecosystem. Uh, I don't have a presentation because it's just seven, five to seven minutes, so I'll keep it brief. Um, as most of you know that uh, 12 years ago, uh, almost 13 years ago now, uh, the first tech hub was set up in Kenya. And I'm part of that uh, founding team with Eric Hersman, uh, and it was called the iHerb. It was set up um, for developers and computer scientists like myself. Uh, before 2010, there was not much happening in the tech ecosystem, and meetups were happening in coffee shops or uh, conference um, conference rooms once a year. Uh, so when we realized that there was a gap and that we should actually have a space to bring people together to meet uh, and share ideas and just talk to each other, uh, enabling what you call serendipity and then intentional serendipity to happen. Uh, we didn't realize uh, within the first six months of uh, setting up the iHerb uh, in Nairobi, Kenya, we had over close to 100 events. Uh, that, that was very intense, very intense period uh, in 2010 to understand the needs of uh, the community. And what we saw were uh, boot camps uh, uh, being set up. Uh, these are like 24 to 48 hour challenges whereby uh, they were forming, uh, people were actually meeting each other and co-founding uh, ideas and projects and finally like MVPs, minimum viable products uh, after 48 hours and actually presenting that uh, to a group of uh, potential angels and uh, investors. And out of this, uh, the what we call the Silicon Savannah happened today and like some of the startups we've heard in the past like Copo Copo and Mprom, Pezesha and uh, was a teller were actually like uh, formed from uh, these interesting events. And it's great to see that some of my colleagues are actually uh, doing events that enable uh, intentional serendipity and collaborations to happen, whereby you can find your founder, you can actually find your team members, you can find your potential mentor, advisor, or potential uh, investor. Uh, post uh, 
the IHERB, um, we built a community of uh, over the five years uh, that I was there, we built a community of over 10,000 members. And this is a mix of developers and entrepreneurs uh, who we actually wanted to engage through various uh, channels like uh, the mobile lab, which was set up. And we had what we call the first uh, pitch competition in uh, in Kenya called Pivot East in 2011. And uh, similar to what we call like uh, Techstars or Demo Day at Y Combinator, this was a platform for uh, mobile entrepreneurs at that time to actually uh, showcase their uh, ideas and, and potential companies. Uh, some of the companies that have come out of that right now are today that we've seen examples are logistics companies like Sandy, uh, some others pivoted, some died, some have survived. So uh, it's interesting to see that when enablers like us give opportunities to the entrepreneurs and the ecosystem as a whole through events, through pitch competitions, through uh, community, a community of uh, uh, investors or a community of uh, founders, interesting things can happen. Like this event, for example, uh, bringing interesting people together. You may not collaborate now, but you may collaborate uh, down down the line. Uh, post the iHerb, I became an entrepreneur, so I closed the loop, becoming a, a ecosystem enabler and becoming an entrepreneur to understand the challenges of an entrepreneur. I started an HR tech startup uh, focused on developing data scientists and then we pivoted to actually becoming uh, the powerhouse for recruiting of tech and product uh, skill sets for for Africa. Uh, since then we still do that but we've pivoted to a workforce uh, planning simulator uh, for large companies uh, past growth startups. Uh, I'm still an entrepreneur within Brave. Uh, it's still running, but I transitioned out uh, to enable the ecosystem even more uh, by setting up a management consultancy firm for growth startups uh, called Platform One. And what we've seen is has, as the ecosystem has matured over the last uh, 10 years plus, we see uh, founders and C-suite and management uh, actually struggling with strategy, culture, uh, process, growth strategy, uh, tax strategy, uh, when they are past the pre the pre seed, getting into the seed and uh, Series A. So, uh, with my uh, current uh, co-founders and partners, we're actually uh, setting up um, playbooks whereby we can actually help. Uh, upcoming entrepreneurs getting into growth phase uh, with um, the strategy planning, uh, with potential investment planning, uh, with potential growth strategies across the, the continent, uh, partners, investors uh, that they, they can actually look at. Um, as an individual, as, uh, as Jessica Colasso, uh, I've been an angel investor in the ecosystem for over 10 years. I burnt my fingers uh, uh, in the first couple of years because I uh, was investing blindly and didn't know the terms of angel investor. Mm -hmm. But now there are actually uh, a lot of angel groups that exist like Naiba and UK Tech Hub have partnered together with EABCA to offer a course for upcoming angel investors. Um, so I have joined that network uh, because I want to create a hybrid of angel investors and VCs for startup deal flow. Uh, I sit on a couple of uh, startup uh, boards as an advisor and I've invested in a couple of startups. And uh, what I'm looking to do is actually uh, increase my a network of potential investors actually interested in the African uh, ecosystem and uh, 
uh, who are tech agnostic. Uh, so that's what I'm focused on in terms of uh, enabling uh, right now. Um, so uh, coming from a long way, understanding this ecosystem, uh, just understanding the pitfalls is, it's great that far, uh, that startups are fundraising. We actually see a lot on TechCrunch and other uh, newsletters that uh, a startup is probably raising every like one or two weeks in the, at the seed stage or at the pre-series A. But then we've seen seven startups that have died over the last couple of weeks uh, in logistics and last mile uh, solutions. So we have to be wary that uh, raising funding is not one of the success metrics. It's an enabler to enable you to get to your success. And success is, have you have a, do you have a business that can run sustainably? Do you have a team that can run uh, smoothly? Um, do you have a good governing board? So these are the gaps that I'm looking at as an enabler and uh, using different channels and right now, not only the, the tech hub, uh, as I transitioned out of the tech hub, I feel tech hub is one enabler, but different networks coming together and working together, I think uh, is very is very powerful. So I think this network put together um, and finding different channels to work with each other will be the solution to uh, the upcoming months and years for the African tech ecosystem. Fellow founders are coming together to form what we call uh, the uh, Silicon Zanzibar uh, or like DAOs, uh, DAOs in the Web3 space whereby uh, founders who have raised over 2 million US dollars come together with each other and then share uh, the ideas. So it's actually great to see that Founders right now are rallying up to support uh, each other. Uh, it wasn't like that 10 years ago. Uh, but we still have a lot to do as uh, ecosystem leaders. So I look forward to working with authentic leaders and, and unleashing the best in people in the different uh, verticals and companies that I'm working on right now. That's it for me. Well, uh, Jessica, that was uh, amazing. I had not expected that we would get such a thorough run through of how the ecosystem has evolved uh, since uh, the very early stage, more than a decade ago. In fact, uh, the next speaker that I had uh, had invited and I was hoping that could join us today, but unfortunately it was not possible, is Mr. Johnny Kielsko, who is a Danish compatriot, founder, executive chairman of Growth Africa, which he set up uh, in Kenya in 2002. Uh, but I think Jessica has very well <laughs> covered uh, the history of Kenya's ecosystem uh, perfectly. So thank you so much, Jessica, for for that. So um, yeah, so I think uh, since uh, we don't have any more speakers, uh, we'll move on to the last part. Uh, if I can share my screen, drop. I think it must be this one. So, uh, so the, the last part is uh, the Q&A, uh, where I'll ask a few questions to those speakers who are still with us. Uh, uh, it's been already a very rich uh, and long debate uh, for more than one hour. Uh, so I'll just I'll start by asking um, a few questions. Um, one of the first questions uh, maybe we could start by asking is what do you think about the value that Entness potentially could provide for, for Kenya's entrepreneurs? Uh, if anyone would like to... Uh, uh, both Kenya's entrepreneurs as well as, uh, of course, economic support organizations and intermediaries such as, as yourself. Uh, anyone want to respond to that? Otherwise, um, I can uh, have some few specific questions. Let's uh, maybe I can um, start. Um, with uh, uh, oh yeah, so maybe start from from Jessica, uh, who was the last speaker. Um, 
Oh yeah. So now that you're giving us uh, this overview of some of uh, how this ecosystem has developed from maybe a more silo-based approach to a more uh, with more synergies and collaboration between the founders. <clears throat> Uh, um, what role do you think that a national advisory board for impact investing Kenya uh, should play to address uh, some of the challenges and opportunities that you addressed uh, in your in your presentation? And I'm assuming that you are familiar with the fact that Kenya is in the process of setting up a national advisory board. Yes. Uh, yes, I am. Um, I think... Uh, when it when it comes to uh, enabling uh, the the ecosystem through uh, accelerators and uh, incubators, these as time goes by, what I've seen in the ecosystem is there's there's a lot of formality and structure that that comes uh, into play, and um that leads to like um i think it's called asec or association of startups and incubators in kenya a double s e s e k uh i mean as these entities form even there's one called afri labs for like uh tech hubs uh within the african continent um there's a positive and there's a negative it brings cohesion together and you actually get to know what uh, each party is uh, working on but the the negative side is it, it can bring a lot of um, bureaucracy and uh, because there are a lot of stakeholders there's a lot of planning and there's a lot of discussion to do uh, and then probably policies getting into place so this takes time uh, so when you have like national advisory boards um and committees uh it, it takes time to bring like people together because these are people at high level uh uh high level uh roles for example and the availability is scarce so you're probably meeting them once every three months um to discuss uh certain policies for example a uh, tax incentive when it comes to investing in uh, African startups. What's what's the role that uh, government can play in reducing this? Uh, so I feel there's a positive and negative to it. Uh, it brings the cohesion, it brings the collaboration together, but also it can actually stall a lot of like progress when it comes to uh, the ecosystem. For example, um, founders want to move very fast, right? Um, so they look for quick ways of like registering uh, their companies, either in Delaware, either in um, in Mauritius, Cayman Islands. Um, if we have an advisory board, can they work with existing founders to uh, to enable uh, more rapid um, growth of the ecosystem? For example, setting up of Silicon Zanzibar uh, is by a couple of founders um, and the government of uh, Tanzania. So can we actually have more collaboration with the actual uh, players on the ground. Sometimes we set up advisory boards and the actual players on the advisory boards are, are not the players on the ground. So uh, what needs to be heard doesn't get actually represented well. So I am for and, uh, and also have some uh, issues with uh, advisory boards at the same time and okay. committees. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jessica. Um, uh, Innocent, uh, you mentioned, you ta also talked about uh, the fact that the ecosystem is rather segregated when it comes to the founders, government, and uh, and corporates. Um, my question to you is that um, since you are working to build a vibrant community for startups in Africa, uh, do you use any platform to create this environment online? And if so, if not, do you think that a platform such as Endness could be the home uh, an, an instrument or tool to allow you to create, uh, overcome this uh, segre segregation that you have uh, observed uh, in the ecosystem? 
Yeah. Um. Yeah. True. Um. Such. I was just going through the platform now, and I think it would be it would be a solution because at the end of the day, you'll find that um a lot of founders who really want to build out some of these solutions don't really don't really have access to the resources they need. So even no matter how much work Innocent does to bring everyone together. At the end of the day, there's a founder sitting somewhere outside Nairobi who really doesn't know that such a program exists or there is an event happening. So until um, all these founders are put together in a platform that is, you know, cross-border um, in such a way that it's not a Nairobi thing. It's something that somebody sitting somewhere in the most remote part of Kenya as a founder is able to access the, all, the same resources, the same um, networks, the same events. Yes, so I, I I totally think that this would be um, a great solution to that. And on top of that, now the, the other part would be to also bring as many um, ecosystem enablers onto the platform as well, so that you have both sides. So you don't you, you also don't have um, a million founders uh, and two ecosystem and ecosystem enablers. Um, so it's it's also quite balanced uh, because I'm sure there are also ecosystem enablers out there who are really trying hard. Um, to go back to the point of to, to the point that Nairobi is um, Kenya is quite segregated in terms of um, the whole startup conversation. If you look at the number of ecosystem enablers in Nairobi and you look at the number of ecosystem enablers outside oh. Nairobi, we are probably looking at above two hundred ecosystem enablers. This includes accelerators, incubators, co working spaces. But then outside Nairobi, they are, we are probably looking at less than twenty um, cumulatively, um, and it's not that innovation happens only in Nairobi. I'm sure there is a lot of innovation happening outside uh, outside the capital city. So the more um, bringing on board a platform to solve that helps also democratize that, not in terms of the founders only, but also in terms of um, geographical locations. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Innocent. Uh, Grace, um, what do you, you or Andy see as the biggest challenge uh, that uh, uh, from your global experience since you you can compare the Kenyan ecosystem with uh, other countries and regions where you operate is it on a demand side or is it on the supply side or is it the the overall ecosystem uh, looking at your work stream number five which is about ecosystem building support Big one, the local chapters. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you, Grace. Go, go again. I was Grace. saying that, that the problem really differs depending on where you're looking at it from. So looking at it from the local chapters that would have, there's opportunity there to bridge global actors with the local actors. Um, translation of how Andy shows up in the chapter sometimes is a problem for us since we are at Global Outfit, where we are seen as not being able to understand the local context, but increasingly we hire locally uh, from experienced, um, experienced staff that have been here in the ecosystems for long. We are also actively working with um, associations that I think Jessica mentioned I, I work I sat on the board of ASEC for a bit I just finished my, my term um, we work with um, larger bodies of uh, ESOs as well to be able to really bridge that uh, localization problem that we have but what we do is we ensure that we are able to support ESOs and we're even moving more towards supporting national networks within our nascent uh, markets to ensure that we can support those national uh, associations or networks so that they are able to build the larger local um, networks and associations to provide that support that they need to the ESOs and to the entrepreneurs consequently. So the issue there will be contextualization but or localization, but we really are working through partnerships and collaborations to be able to eradicate that. But our goal is actually being uh, garnered as we bridge Global South and Global North. Okay, uh, we have uh, just five minutes left. So uh, are there any of those uh, attendees who have kindly stayed with us until the very end uh, who would like to raise any questions to our panelists?
Um, you can also write the questions if you prefer not to uh, state the question. You're welcome to do that. Well, from my perspective, I'm I'm just amazed at how much good efforts is uh, out there, and the fact I think what Jessica mentioned, uh, there was also a comment in uh, in the chat box, amazing that we don't know all of these different things, and that's that's what I think is part of the problem that there is so much great things happening, but it's very hard to be aware of the different things, and especially in the current environment where we are bombarded and completely overwhelmed and spammed, scammed, hacked and so on, then I think we need uh, to try and uh, organize ourselves a little bit better through uh, a, a more trusted space and so on. So yeah, that, that's what I think we have an opportunity here. And I appreciate very much, Christian, your intervention and uh, big support for the overall vision and so on here. And this is exactly in line with what I think we we can we can very easily do a lot more to make a bigger cake than yeah we imagine if we would have a bigger pie for all of us right rather than fifty different small ones yeah yeah okay um, thank you Johan um, well I have many more questions uh, but I, as I said to you in introduction this is just the first step. Uh, we'll be able to continue the debate uh, afterwards on the Endness platform and uh, uh, 4IP Group will also reach out to all of the speakers uh, bilaterally. Uh, I had a lot of questions. I just want to maybe ask one concluding. Uh, I know that Andy is providing that, but um, uh, my question is uh, who amongst uh, these economic support organizations are actually offering training services that offer impact investment readiness? or impact assessment courses uh, for the founders to help them transition towards becoming impact or social enterprises? Is that something that is uh, becoming more mainstream among the economic support organizations? Or is it still something that maybe the NAP Kenya would need to do some further advocacy for to get it more widespread? Um, I don't know, Innocent or Jessica, if uh, you would want to speak to this, since I know that Grace is providing, uh, Andy is providing at least some of these services to your members. Uh, Christine, can you clarify uh, whether you're asking if there are more uh, companies like Andy or? No, the question is uh, to what extent you, in addition to, let's say, the advisory services that you're offering to your entrepreneurs, uh, are they also aligned or intended to help these founders transition towards becoming uh, social or impact enterprises addressing some of Kenya's uh, SDG challenges? Or is it more you're working more with tech ventures or let's say conventional traditional companies uh, that are not really thinking about having an intended impact on people and planet, which is what characterized mm -hmm. impact enterprises? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's an interesting point. I think um, we have we don't have as many social uh, uh, entrepreneurs as compared to like um, hardcore tech startups, right? Mm -hmm. That are actually producing a business engine uh, to generate. Uh, revenue and but still it may have an impact uh, i mean we, we see a lot of these uh in healthcare in in logistics last mile giving jobs in the future of future of work and um i think what could help is actually uh making that uh social entrepreneurship uh is also a part of tech uh, entrepreneurship and making it uh, a little more uh, visible and aware to the entrepreneurs um, that want to actually start new ventures that are existing, that they can actually uh, have their ventures according to the SDGs and have uh, social enterprises. While that said, there are a couple of uh, tech startups that are actually uh, 
geared towards addressing the SDGs and uh, geared towards like the social entrepreneurship uh, side of things. It's just not, uh, it's not as prominent and obvious uh, when actually they're spoken about in media uh, uh, or, uh, or on their website uh, as a whole. Um, I think a couple of colleagues, probably two colleagues have some points to add. Thanks so much, uh, Jessica. Uh, the last two interventions, first from Grace. Please, over to you, Grace. Um, before joining Andy, I worked with B-Lab. B-Lab is in the business of um, helping businesses to realize economic, social, and environmental impact. And from my experiences working with B-Lab and the ecosystem is, like Jessica said, I think there's a mentality here that commercial businesses are not for social impact. And I think it should be the way the other way around. And that's what we are trying to teach our ecosystem, that any business that exists should exist for good, should be able to provide social and environmental impact as well as economic impact. Um, and having like a 360 review of the of the business, of the impact of the business and on the business. So being able to really look internally and externally on what kind of impact they are having. B Lab has awesome tools that they have uh, which are free that we were really able to start um, encouraging uh, founders to use to be able to track where they are to use it either as a measurement tool or as a learning tool and also to give you the language to talk about when you, it comes to impact so try with the work now that we do at, at, at Andy is being able to give those specific metrics that you can use for your organization um, as for ESG again coming from this perspective that any business is a business for good and not just social business or impact business. There's mm -hmm. that segregation in our, in our market that we need to really bridge that any business, whether you are commercial strong or a tech company, that we are all headed towards having some impact within our ecosystems and within our large environments. That's the comment I'd add. Thank you so much, Grace, for that last uh, remark from you. And then uh, we have uh, Innocent and then we finish with Monica afterwards. Uh, Innocent, over to you. <clears throat> Yeah, um, I just wanted to add the fact that um, we uh, we we have seen a lot of a lot of um, Kenyan Kenyan startups. Uh, technically, they should be impact oriented, but I think the economic side tends to tends to override that in most cases. But um, from a from a personal experience and what we've done as Startinev is out of the last six textile startup weekends we've run in Nairobi, we've made sure that three of them were social impact driven um, with two of them being very specific to inclusive technology. Uh, we were almost forcing founders to build uh, tech that is inclusive. You know, um, if I'm building an app or a website today, uh, there's somebody who's living with whichever disabilities, are they able to use that platform as comfortably as somebody who's um, not living with disabilities? But yeah, I think it's it's work in progress, but it's one of the things we are really working hard on to make sure that uh, which, which, whichever startup you're building, tech or non-tech, is uh, as impactful in the society as possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Innocent. And Monica, you get the last word before I conclude. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for the chance. My name is Monica from Jazza Rift Ventures. Um, I think Steve spoke about Jazza Rift Ventures. We have a collaboration with Vilgro. Uh, so I think I will echo what Grace, Grace has said about commercial businesses uh, not having impact in mind, especially in Kenya and generally in Af the African market. But what we do at JRV is try and um, train our portfolio companies to look at impact, whether they are commercial or social enterprises. And uh, we actually have our own internal impact um, framework where we look at the breadth of impact, the, the depth of impact, and also the growth of um, the startup. I mean, the impact that the startup can have um, in in the market that they're looking at. So, um, yeah, so that's what we are doing at JRV to, you know, like educate our, our portfolio companies on impact as well. Okay, thank you so much, yeah. Monica. Maybe you can share a link to your company website on the chat box uh, here. Uh, Definitely. So that we can take a closer Thanks. look and then we'll reach out to you afterwards.
So thank you thank so you. much to all of the speakers today. Um, let me just quickly conclude. Uh, so there was a, a number of key recommendations coming out of the Africa Winter Philanthropic Association's study to develop the social investment industry, which are grouped into three categories. Uh, there's a recommendation to catalyze diverse and innovative pool of social capital, recommendations to empower organizations delivering oh. social change, and recommendations to develop enabling environment and infrastructure. Today, we are focused on the recommendations to empower organizations delivering social change, that is, uh, demand side players. And from the AVPA st uh, study, uh, let me list some of the most important ones, which is the development of new technical assistance founding strategies to build investable locally funded pipelines, developing interventions to support human resources, needs of enterprises, promoting alternative funding models for, uh, uh, in, for example, NGOs, establishing a technical assistance toolkit and an embedded capacity building, and bridging the broken link among incubators, accelerators, and impact investors, most importantly. But I think uh, that bridge is already being constructed from what we've heard today, uh, which is, I think, is uh, great to hear. Uh, um, so. When it comes to the fund managers in the East Africa region, uh, they mainly leverage their standard metrics and tools customized to suit specific requirement in the investing companies and sector. And some also use investors KPIs. The definition and measurement of impact remain varied amongst various social investors operating in the region with investors using multiple standards, frameworks and tools. And uh, impact investors and DFIs and international foundations mainly use global IMM frameworks. Most local social providers have developed their own IMM tools and metrics. In fact, 26% of investors interviewed by the AVPA uh, leverage global standardized metrics, while 20, another 26% use customized metrics for each investment. So we recommend small growing businesses to use the 4P Group ESD toolkit to help you measure, monitor, and magnify your positive social and environmental impact. And 4P Group's ESC Toolkit for Impact Enterprises, we have actually witnessed by working with more than 100 Zambian SMEs since 2017 to help them raise capital for growth. And most SMEs in Zambia are not able to tap into various sources of domestic and international impact capital. This is not because uh, the SME's products and services lack a positive impact on society, but simply because they lack a guiding tool to help them tell their impact story while making them more investment ready. Uh, so based on this first-hand capital raising and investment matchmaking experience in Zambia, this led us to identify this important market gap. And consequently, 4P Group uh, has developed an environmental, social, and corporate governance framework, the ESC Toolkit, which helps businesses transition from conventional to social and impact enterprise status. The ESC toolkit comprises of seven steps that will guide this journey of transitioning to becoming an impact enterprise. It offers capacity building training, which helps businesses realize the need for impact consideration as agents of change in countries working to promote green inclusive economies. And the aim is to help these businesses identify a few key SCT outcomes to be addressed through their business development and entrepreneurial activities. And 4P Group ESG Toolkit is an investment readiness framework, does not only help the businesses access impact capital, but also help them maximize contribution to society's well-being through their activities. So um, in terms of the next event, uh, we'll, um, basically the next event will be next week where we will uh, encourage uh, the uh, economic support organization uh, that was pitching today, along with a number of other economic support organizations in Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia, and Tanzania, and DRC, that we have also showcased in the past, uh, to select um, a graduate from your program to uh, provide a five minutes pitch next week. So we'll come back to you, each of you, uh, as to how, you, how, we'll, how we intend to move forward. Uh, then uh, next month, uh, the Swiss Impact Investing Association, uh, we are launching a new debate series. Uh, the first topic will be on what makes Geneva unique as a sustainable finance laboratory compared to other global financial centers. And then next quarter, uh, we will uh, start our sixth edition of the Impact Investor Circle series, focusing on Uganda. And then in the second part of this year, uh, the Swiss Impact Investing Association, 
uh, together with uh, a number of African National Advisory Board for Impact Investing, and we hope also Kenya will join that, uh, will have a stand at the Africa Village at the Building Bridges, which is the biggest impact investing conference in Central Europe. And on the 3rd of October at the same event, SIA uh, will be organizing a session on the role of institutional investors within impact investing. And then at the end of the year, uh, SIA is organizing our Impact Summit, which takes place in Souk in the northern part, of German-speaking part of Switzerland, uh, where you're all welcome to attend as well. Uh, that would be an in-person event. So, um, so once again, we'd like to thank all of you for participation today and those of you who are going to listen to this uh, recording uh, that will be uploaded on 4P Groups and CS YouTube channels. Um, uh, should you wish to further engage with the organizer or the panelists, please do uh, reach out directly to us using the contact details above or using the Entness platform. Um, and then finally, all remains to be said is to wish you all a happy, healthy and successful time until we meet again online or in person, hopefully, uh, maybe next week uh, or at our next event uh, series uh, focusing on Uganda. I wish you all a wonderful evening and uh, thank you so much for your support and your participation. Really great question. Really, really helpful and insightful with the great comments from uh, all the speakers there. So thank you for bringing us all together. Thank you so much for your support, Johan.